Now, lads, I'm not one for reading novels. However, if you go to a bookshelf and you've got all of the Harry Potter books, all seven of them, and you've never read one before, and you go and grab the fifth book in the shelf and you open it on the seventh chapter, it's going to be extremely confusing. There's a lot of context missing. You have no idea how the main character, in this case, Harry, has gotten to where he has gotten. And this is exactly the same when you are looking and comparing yourself to other guys who may have built their physique to a certain point, their career, their lifestyle, and they're achieving all this crazy stuff. But it's just the same, guys. You're simply just in a different book and you're in a different chapter. It doesn't mean it's not possible. But what you don't want to be doing is thinking you have to be where they are and have to be making the moves they're making today because where they are is what makes sense for their next move. Now, most guys are stuck in a rut and they don't know what their next move is. So exactly what I'm going to explain in this video is simply how to do that. And now what's really interesting is I read a book a while back and this book basically breaks down how leading authors and movie directors structure their films and books in order to be extremely relatable because there is a framework that every single person goes through in life when achieving goals and, and, and in order for it to be that, that relatable they use this okay now there is 10 phases every single novel every single movie will have 10 phases and i'm going to show you all of them and then you can identify exactly where you are right now you're going to find one of these phases extremely relatable to where you are right now and then you'll be able to see what the next chapter is so you can then go and take your next move and get out of this rut that you're currently in all right and the, the thing is guys most guys are in a rut but because they're in a rut they then just stop writing because they don't know their next move they stop right in the next chapter they stop right in the next books and it makes it impossible to ever achieve these big goals Whereas once you understand exactly where you are right now from like a bird's eye perspective, and then you know what chapter follows, it's very easy to get back into that flow state and carry on and pursue your next move, right? So always aim for a book a year and every single month you're going to be writing your next chapter. Just never quit on writing the books, okay? So effectively, this is how stories work, guys. I've got some notes here. So there's something called the hero opening journey. So effectively, in a film or in a book, there is this external goal, this external force. And this is what creates inspiration. And the main character, they see something that they want to achieve. And then internally, they start this psychological transformation on how they're going to actually achieve that. So phase one, chapter one, that all these books follow is the character appears... And at this point, they're very relatable. They have flaws. They're just an everybody guy. They're an underdog. And like, this was me, guys. Like now I'm somebody that's turned over seven figures. I built a great physique, working with thousands of clients. But if we rewind, I was in this intro phase once, guys. I was the guy that was just an engineer working in my nine to five skinny fat i blended in from the crowd i wouldn't have stood out in any room and if i would have stood out it would have been for bad purposes i was i was just this lanky beanpole with an acne filled face right it was just nothing special i was the underdog all right and this is how everything starts so maybe you feel like you're there right now phase two the character then finds a strong desire to achieve something specific pulled from an external source so Maybe they're on Instagram. Maybe they're watching a YouTube video. Maybe they go on holiday to Dubai or to the Maldives and they see this amazing life. They see this guy with an amazing physique, something they want to achieve. And now it's just triggered that little thing in the back of your mind for something that you know you want to achieve. And it's like a calling from your cause. Phase three, there is a conflict. The character faces obstacles and challenges that prevent the character from achieving it easily. So for example, my first phase with my self-development, I was that ugly, weird, skinny, fat guy, nothing going for me, huge underdog. I then saw guys on social media and if I went away on holiday and I was exposed to seeing like how some guys looked, how some guys lived, 
And I saw that. I was like, I need that life. I want to be the guy that doesn't live in the UK, stuck in the rat race in a nine to five in just a shit body. I want to be the guy that's confident, got high end women around him, has a great physique, lives a good lifestyle, has access to great networks. But as soon as I knew I wanted that goal, I then faced obstacles and challenges such as no one around me. There was no one around me winning. My friends, my social circle were all very negative. So with my family and it was no fault of anybody's, but I was just in an environment that made it very challenging to achieve something that was starting a new legacy. And, and most of you guys probably relate to that. Like it's very difficult. I was wanting to create this great physique, this great lifestyle, this great business, but I was in a nine to five where I weren't even working nine to five. I was working 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. And I was like, where's all this time gonna come from to go to the gym and train and, and start a business? And where are all these people that I need to elevate me to that next level? So that's the conflict phase. Now, phase four is really, really powerful. This is the guide. This is where the character encounters a guide or a mentor who provides the knowledge, the tools, the resources, the wisdom to overcome the challenges in the form of a blueprint. Something really easy to follow. Now, this is like exactly what we do with our clients. We, we elevate them and we give them the exact strategy to go away and do that. But when I pull this back to my journey, what happened, guys, was my first goal, my first ever book I was writing in my own life was effectively that I wanted to get in better shape. And I went into the gym one day and there was a PT there. And he came over to me, we had a chat, and he may even watch this, he may even know, and like the impact he had, even because he was just in my first book, the impact he had on my life had such a huge snowball because he got me going. And I ended up, I signed up with him, I was working with him online, and he, he gave me that bit more mindset I needed. He was like, Tom, I know you work in these hours, but like, if you carry on being a little bitch, you're gonna carry on getting little bitch results and no more time's gonna come at you, no more opportunity. Like, you are in this life and you are entirely accountable for everything that you have. So you have to make it happen or you live the rest of your life not making it happen. He kept it very real with me. He gave me the strategy as well. He gave me the meal plan, the training plan and helped me elevate my mindset updated it weekly. He was just a great online physique coach. And he elevated me. And he was the guide or mentor that I had that got me through that first hurdle in my first book. He provided me with phase five, the plan, a step-by-step -step plan in order to achieve the goal. It requires risk and sacrifice, but provides clarity moving forward. So that was when he gave me the strategy, the full roadmap with my physique. He gave me the the brutal honesty that yes, I'm gonna need to be in the gym at 4 a.m. if I'm gonna train before work, even if I don't feel like it and I need to train after work, I'm gonna have to get it done, okay? Now six is the call to action. The character must take a decisive action, usually by facing fears or overcoming a major challenge. This is the turning point where the character fully commits to the journey they're presented with. So effectively, facing the fear, overcoming a major challenge. You may be thinking of that right now in your life. For me then, it was just the fact that honestly, like I was working away. I ended up basically getting flown away to, I was obviously living in the UK in a small town called Huddersfield. I was getting flown away to Ireland and my routine had gone. Like I literally had no life. I was working seven days a week and th I, there was no way to do it in, from my perception on how to get in shape and eat good. And, and basically this was like, okay, no, I'm fully committed. It doesn't matter if I'm gonna do body weight exercises in the hotel rooms I'm working from, I'm gonna be up, it doesn't matter. 4 a.m. I'm gonna go find or walk or bus or whatever, find the local gym or just do body weight in my hotel room. It's gonna be smashing out the press ups. This was just where I was like, no, there's a goal and no matter what it's getting done, there was like no negotiation going on at this point. And it was like, the goal's getting done regardless. Oh, so what, you're in a hotel. I could have moaned and said I couldn't eat healthy or I could have got up early, gone to the 24 hour Tesco that I had access to and could then go and, and get some food shopping and, and start hitting my macros. So this, is, this was the call to action for me where I could fully commit in book one. The battle. The character faces a significant challenge or confrontation. 
the hero's growth is tested and they must apply everything they've learned. So for me, this actually shifted. So I was working quite a long time on my physique and mindset. And it got to the point where I really, really knew that I didn't want to be in this job. And like for me to take it to that next level, I was like going to have to take a big risk. And for me, there weren't time. Like I knew I wanted to be in um, the fitness coaching. I built a pretty solid physique at this point, guys. And the first business I ever went into was personal training. And I was like, I wanted to do it, you know, the normal way where you've got a nine to five and you start PTing maybe before work or after work or on the weekends. But it just couldn't happen because I was away and I didn't have set start times, set finish times. It was very much a game of you've got to go all in or you don't do it. And I was just not prepared to live the rest of my life thinking, what if? Like it was as hard as it could have been, guys. And I faced the biggest challenge or confrontation in this period by actually walking into work one day and quitting my job. I weren't even a qualified PT. I was like, right, this was in COVID, the, the worst time you could have ever quit a job, guys. And I went into work and I was like, I thought about it a little bit, but I thought I'm gonna have to jump. I've been building my physique, I've built my mindset, I, I back myself, basically, because I've been doing the daily habits every day. And I went in and I quit and I came home the next day and I was like, God, like I've got like 1,000 pound in my bank account to my name and I've got no PT qualification at this point. I've got no job. All I do know is that I've got me, my physique and my mind that I've built up so far. And then I went all in used all the tools that I'd built from discipline and backing myself and mindset and just facing fears to go, go all in. And I went and I, I bought a personal training course. I did it online. I would smash out my training every day. And I got a gym at a job. Uh, sorry, I got a job at a gym for the 4th or 5th of January, okay, during COVID. And I made all of that happen within a month. Very high stress, very high stress, very high pressure. Okay. And I went and did that. And the second day I went into the gym and I was a self-employed personal trainer at this point, the gym closed on the second day. And I was like, oh my God, guys, like, fuck. Like I have to go back to my parents and be like, oh yeah, I quit my job which they fell out with me for. They were like, that's the stupidest thing you could ever do. Quit the job, I had no money coming in. I was literally skint. And I was like, oh no. Anyway, I had like 600 followers on Instagram. I would post some stories. The gym owner, very thankfully, I really appreciate him for this. He let me take home some dumbbells, some barbells, took them home and I was personal training outside in the snow. No clients though. So I had from January till April, outside initially no clients and i would just message everybody i know hey do you want to come around to mine we'll do a session outside and long story short after a few weeks i'd built up to probably 10 clients very fast from just hustling and this leads into then the transformation after the battle the character achieves their goal and experiences a profound internal change that is the ultimate payoff for all the hard work their new version of themselves and this for me was this grind time through leaving my job, going all in on my physique and all in on my fitness in the most volatile time in probably human history since the war. And I just grinded it out, guys. And, and honestly, within my first month, I was earning more than I were doing seven days a week, 14 hours a day in my salary job. It was crazy. I think I turned over like 4,000 in my first month outside in COVID with just some dumbbells. By the time I was April and I'd come back to the gym, I was doing over 12,000 a month, 10 to 12,000 a month. And I'd just gone all in. And this was a huge transformational period for me. And I remember I then came home. I think it was the end of May, just after my birthday. And this leads into chapter nine, the return. The, char uh, the character returns for the, to the ordinary world, but now transformed. And now they bring back their wisdom, their knowledge, their skills, their resources. And now they are used to benefit other people and provide value. So what I did, guys, <laughs> I actually came home, 
before this guys i'd just been up in the morning bed late at night and i'd been going to the gym 4 a.m till 10 12 p.m at night every single day anyway i came home randomly and i had i bought i'd put like 30k 40k down on a brand new bmw um m4 and i came home and my parents were like what whose car is that and i was like oh it's mine i've just i've just put a deposit down and bought the car on finance and they were like what and and this is the point guys like this is when you, you the only way you can come out of battle with a trophy and, and and get the victory is to do the battle most people are trying to avoid the battle but if you're in that place of comfort right now your sign is you need to enter the battle phase you need to go into chapter seven so the return i came back i bought this car i was doing a lot better financially and now I was even in a position where I could send my sister money. Like I could really impact the family. I was no longer a liability to the family and needing to ask for money or whatever. I can now get my own place. And then chapter 10, the character sees new external possibilities and sets out on quest in order to go after it. What does this mean? You now go write book two, book three, book four, book five, book six. But the same process has always happened, guys. You come out in chapter one as just the average guy for where you are. You then have a desire. You see some external force that you need to go for. You feel like, no, that goal, like I can't live not knowing I've gone for that goal. You're then going to face challenges, obstacles. This is normal. It may be your mates trying to pull you out to social events. It may be your, your family doubting you on making that move or people saying, why are you going all in on this? But then you're going to meet that guide. You're going to meet that mentor. You're going to invest in that course, that program, that guy who's walked the walk that you've walked. In this case, in book one for me, it was just that PT that gave me some hope, some belief that I could build myself up. I could build my physique going from this awfully skinny, fat, spotty guy to someone with a very good physique within six months just because I invested myself and was prepared to open that door into the unknown and that set me off on a completely different life path from having the belief in myself building my best self being confident in social events to then quitting my job and going all in on pt in the most challenging time i think anyone's probably faced in our generation covid with work and how volatile it were then grinded it out <laughs> literally 18 hour days outside in the freezing cold shoveling snow dumbbells hustling, knocking on doors, messaging people, hey, let's get sessions in, and came back, entered the gym, full diary of clients, making over 10K a month, bought a brand new M4, and that was phase one for me, and it all happened so fast because I was prepared to just listen to that initial thing. Like All it takes, guys, is that chapter where you meet that guide and your boat's currently heading for a miserable life, and ever so slightly, they just change the direction of the boat. And you don't feel it that much initially. You might have some more confidence. You might have a bit more belief. But then when you follow that new path and you run all the chapters down that new path, your life will change forever. And then I went in, guys. I went in and continued writing the books. I didn't stop there. I was like, book two, come on. I want to I want to I want to live in Dubai. I want to be doing, you know, amazing i want to have a huge influence online on my instagram page i want to have hundreds of clients every single year that we're getting results with and then i went through i i faced obstacles i was actually with a partner at the time that didn't believe and trust and didn't want me to go all in and was like when's it gonna stop that was my new challenge and then i met again and and spoke with i invested a lot of money into a mentor who allowed me and gave me the belief and the frameworks and the blueprint to build and scale my business to have a huge impact and get amazing results. I followed that. Then I went through a hard time. First time moving away and being on my own for forever, basically. And then lived that Dubai lifestyle and then so on. And I'd say now I'm in like book six, book seven. But there's also book 250 that I want to go to. But every time, guys, all it takes is understanding that you, you see this external goal. You are motivated by it. And then you allow yourself to get in a challenging, uncomfortable position where you face some adversity and, and, and it's tough and the environment might not make it easy for you, but then you adopt in yourself. You get that guide. 
and you allow someone to take you up that path, someone who's already walked the walk, not like the typical school teacher who teaches you to do something they can't even do, right? And then you get the plan, you get the blueprint, you go all in on it, and then you have to use that and everything you've learned, everything you've built up in yourself, you're gonna be forced to use that in battle. It gets really hard. You're gonna get feel, you're gonna feel like you've been knocked to the floor. But when you come out of the battle, that's when you come out with the victory. And it might be you've built the muscle mass, it might be you've shredded the body fat, it might be you've quit the job, it might be you've made your first thousand online, it may be you've made your first ten thousand online, maybe you've got the new car, it may be you've moved to Dubai, to Bali, to anywhere. But the rewards don't come without going to battle. So think about that, guys. You've got the intro, the desire phase, the conflict, the guide, the plan, the call to action, the battle, the transformation, the return. And then you repeat. You go into the next book. And only once you've come back, you then start the next book, guys. I will put all of the depth of this in the description below, guys. So make sure you check out the description below. But use this to identify where you are right now and what your next move is. Because this is just laws of life, guys. Like you have to follow this process. You can't get strong without facing the challenge, without the mentor, without the guide who's walked that path. Don't put your life on hold because you feel like you're in a rut. It doesn't matter, guys. There's always the way out. You can't live the rest of your life thinking, what if, and get to the end of your life in regret. Like if you've got this goal, there's no time to waste, guys. Like if you even wait two months, well, that's two months of progress and two months deeper you could have been. Like all it takes, guys, is six months of just going all in and committing and embracing that it's going to get uncomfortable, but then also having the love and peace in yourself that when you know it's uncomfortable, you're in the right place. Because when it's tough, that's when, that's when you're going to grow, guys. Hope you're taking a lot of value from this, guys. It's really important to be able to have that bird's eye perspective and understand where you are. Also know that everyone else is where they are because they've overcome stuff. Once you've identified where you are, you identify your next move and you commit to that with 100%, guys. And just play the long game. You take excessive action towards your goals every day, but understand that you are playing the long game, guys. Slow is smooth and smooth is fast, but don't get this mistaken with, I'm going to sit back, do nothing, and it's going to happen. It won't happen. It only happens when you take excessive action every day. Guys, I'll see you in the next video. Hope you're taking a lot of value. Make sure you like and subscribe. Drop a comment. It goes a long way. If you don't already, let's connect on Instagram. If you want to shoot me a message, let's do it. I'll hit you back. Let's go.